Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me MJ. Today we're going to be taking a look at this sword and how we can model it in 3D. We're going to be working off of a canvas like we've done many times before. Um, and we're just going to add our own little touches to it to make it our own. So follow along and see how you go. So we're going to do what we've done, uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, uh, quite a few times before, is I'm going to go to Insert and click on Canvas. And then Insert from my computer and then the Sword Canvas. Now we just select a, a plane to put it on, so I'll just select that top plane and you can drag it out and kind of get a desired size but um, we will calibrate it. So I'll click OK there. I'm going to go right click, right click on the canvas and calibrate. So here if we zoom in we can see that's uh, one foot three and a quarter inches. I'm working in metric so I, I looked it up. It's roughly 387 millimeters. So 38 centimeters ish. So that's close enough. I want to do it from this orientation. Now we've got our, our canvas in there. We just need to start tracing it. So we're going to select create sketch. We'll select the top plane. And I'll just rotate this again. And we're going to start doing these outlines. We're going to outline everything there. And then once we're done, <coughs> we will do the extruding. So for this little piece, we could use a spline tool, but I want to use a three-point uh, arc. So create arc, three-point arc. So all you need to do with this is select the two points, and then you've got your arc that you can move. So that's about right. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is just your interpretation of the canvas we've put down. So now I've selected the spline tool and I'll be just kind of following the outline there. You can see as you move up and down it will curve the remaining piece. So it may look out at first but as you move along the curve it will It'll follow the curve for you. So I've just ended that one there. I'm going to push L for line tool. I'm going to go down to there. Now I'll exit the line tool, escape, and spline tool again. We'll just use that along this line and we'll follow this curve right the way up till it snaps onto there. So we've got the outline of the blade done. Now what we're going to do is the rest of it. So I'll go back to line tool. I'll start at this point and go up. I want to make sure that this is um, perfectly vertical and it's continuous with that bottom part. So that's how I've just started up there and I'm going to go around like that until we get back to the bottom. So with this you're just moving your mouse, finding the point you want. With this one, we can see if you move it around you can get your angle. We want it to snap to 90. And I'm just going to mouse over that dot. So it knows I want to be in line with that. As I move it down it's going to be giving us a construction line to follow. Click there and we'll close it off there. So then we've got the hilt. Um, now there's a couple of tactics you could employ to do this curve. We could just plan use a spline tool, we could use a offset tool. Uh, it's really up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a spline tool from actually you know what? Let me try something. I'm going to go line tool off of that line. Make sure it snaps to that line. And then I'm going to go straight down and I'm going to go past the curve. 
let's see if this comes right when we want to get to the arc part. So line tool again, it's going to mouse over there and then you see it draws a nice line across. And again, I'm just going to keep it uh, vertical and go right past there. There's other ways to do this that are probably better. This is just me messing around. So there is our the straight portion. What I'm going to do now is a construction line. And more or less where I think this is going to be tangent to it. Select it and draw it at 90 right the way across. So if you look at the top of the screen there, it's 90 and it's snapped on there. So we've got a construction line. What I can do now is create an arc, three point arc, and it'll actually let me snap to that construction line and then to that point as well. So I'll snap between the two, oh, let's turn off construction, snap between these two intersections where the construction line meets the vertical line and let's put it down. Now I'll repeat this step for this one. There it's showing me the midpoint. Now T for trim, so you can either push T or click on the scissors up there and remove these. You can leave the construction line in, that's not a problem. One thing you might want to do if yours is a bit out, you click on the tangent tool or click our vertical line as well as the curve line and it'll just add a tangent constraint on there so that they flow smoothly so you can see it's not quite where we want it let's see if we pull this down a bit that opens the whole thing up so i'm just going to control z that's good enough these lines ideally probably need to be a bit further down but that'll that'll do so you could have just used the spline tool and gone all the way around so for this one now i'm just going to go the peak over there on this one. I want construction line. Let's see why I'm doing this shortly. To the bottom there. Now when I draw a line across here, I'll be able to get the midpoint. So I will draw another construction line. You see it snaps the center. I am actually going to not do a construction line here. I'm going to need to do a proper line. So I'll mouse over there and follow that line to this point. Uh, it looks like I've missed it. So let's just go mouse over, draw the line in that direction, and then draw it again in this direction. So this line is going to come to the peak of the ball over there. Later on you'll see that this is what we're going to use to do our revolve. So I'll click circle. Hey, and that worked out quite nicely. It's almost exact. I just kind of guessed more or less where the center would be. And I'm going to actually trim this. Because we're going to revolve just that section later on. And we're going to do these little bumps over here as well. So I'm going to go take the three point arc. Now we could do this and then Actually, let me do a construction. So I'll click line tool, construction. So more or less where these arcs are at the lowest point, that's just where we're going to run our three point arc on just to be, make sure that they're in line. You can see I haven't deselected construction. So line up, change it off construction, and more or less in the center. These will be about as good as the amount of time you put into them. I'm not really too fast. So I'm just doing them quickly like this. Okay, so now if I finish the sketch, we should have all the elements we need to do our extrude. I'm gonna turn off the canvas. It doesn't look too great right now, but we'll You'll see shortly. So we're going to extrude. We'll extrude this top section. I'm going to do it symmetric. So where it says direction, we'll click symmetric. 
And here you're putting the distance of one side. So I want this blade to be three millimeters thick. So if I put one and a half, click OK. Now if I go inspect this line over here, it shows us that it's three millimeters. So that's one and a half mils in either direction. I'm going to sketch and turn sketch back on. I'm going to repeat this step for the other components. Um, we'll go extrude on the hilt. You see they nicely closed off. So this is why I drew this line running across there. So these profiles are closed off and we can select them. So again, I will select symmetric. I haven't put too much thought into how thick this is going to be, but a hilt um, 20, that seems a bit big. Let's go 15. So that means it'll be overall thickness is 30. And then when we're done, we can put some um, fillets on there just to round it up a bit. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to select new body. You'll see why later on at the end, I'm going to apply um, an appearance and a material to each individual piece just to get a nice look to it. Now again, we'll go extrude, select this, make sure the hand guard is selected, and again, symmetric. This I want a little bit thinner than that, so 10, I'm quite happy, so it'll be an overall thickness of 20. Um, I think these will probably be the same color later on, so I'm just going to allow that to be joined, so those will be the same material, and then this handle and the end bit will be different. Now we select revolve. Select revolve over there and we have to select our axis. So again this is that line we drew. You can see it's revolving around that axis and it's going to be a new body. Click OK. There we've got that new body. You can see we've got several bodies now. The sword, the handle and all the the hilt and the guard and then the handle and now we're going to repeat that revolve step on this bottom piece select the axis of rotation and new body okay so now at this point we can turn off the sketch and we've got pretty much what we're looking for is just a few things I would like to add to it so we want to edge to the sword I'm going to put on a chamfer so I'll select chamfer, I'll select that edge, and it's going to be 1.5, two distance, so let's make this one 10, nope, let's do it the other way around, so I was trying to go, there we go, so there's half of our blade, you can actually, let's play around with this, see what we like, Obviously, the further up, so it won't let me do 30 because it's going past the the blade. So let's go back to 20. We could probably do 25. Nope, still too big. Okay, it's a bit of an odd knife or sword. Let's, I'm happy with 20. Click OK. Now, in theory, we should be able to mirror this. But lately I've been having a bit of trouble. I don't know if it's my fusion or I'm doing something wrong, but having trouble mirroring some features. So normally you go create, mirror. We click over here, but object type would be features. The object is this chamfer we just did. The mirror plane would be the top plane. Now if I go around, you can see it's mirroring onto that side, it looks like it, but last time I tried this and I clicked OK, it could not compute. So there we got the error, compute failed. Not sure what that's all about, but fortunately this is an easy enough um, task. We just go modify, chamfer, select that line, and read it. Actually what we could probably do is, we go back into this one, and we control and then select this line and then it's just going to do them at the same time so as you can see there's always more than one way to do stuff 
it just depends on your imagination so I want to get a few rounder edges on this hilt over here so I'll click fill it and I get these edges and let's try five moles Okay, um, I'm gonna go back with five, nice and chunky, and then yep, I'm happy with that. And if you look at this handle, it looks kind of awkward to hold. So what I thought of doing is, if you zoom in here, you can see we've got these um, sharp dips. We can go fill it, and actually put a fillet on the center line. So we make that two millimeters. We can see it's kind of smooths it out a bit. So you could play with this and obviously if you make it too big, you're not gonna have a, any groove there at all. So there, that's basically straight. So I'm just gonna go back and make that five. That looks good. And now I wanna select the rest. So I'll push Command or Control depends on whether you're using a Mac or a PC. Select the other lines and there they're all selected. I'm quite happy with that whole blade. But now let's just add a bit of, bit of flavor to it, change the appearance a bit. What you can do is right click on a surface or a body and appearance. So now it's gonna bring up this library where we can select our various materials, you can scroll through it, or you can use this search tool here. So I'm gonna go stainless steel. So I know I want a polished stainless steel for the blade. You just click it and drag it over. If you click over there, you can see it's only highlighting part of the blade. It means it's gonna drop it on that surface. So you can see it's two-toned there. If you hold it and you see the whole body is highlighted, it'll drop it on the whole body. So I'm gonna say, remove and then now it's applied it to the whole thing now for this handle I want something black so you can go search various materials or you can just type in black and see what comes up so we've got chrome black plastic black paint enamel black um, let's try this you just drag it over drop it on the body and there's a handle or the hilt and the guard, I guess. And then red, and let's see what red we've got. Well, that anodized red looks good. Now this is why I wanted them as separate bodies, because if they were all one body, you drop one color across the whole thing and everything changes. You can add it separately to faces, but I just thought this is how I'm gonna do it. So that's how I did it. And this ball I want white, there's a white over here uh, jet fusion Let's try that one out i think that works you can just close your menu over there if you have a look at it we've got a pretty cool sword here we've applied quite a few um, finishes to it so when you're busy modeling something you can really make it your own um, you're kind of only limited by your imagination. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Um, leave a comment. If you need to get in touch with me, you can either leave a comment or email me at fusionfundamentals at gmail.com. My email is in the description. And yeah, let me know what you think. Till next time, bye.